Hi everyone, happy new year. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anessa and I am an author from Toronto, Canada and I publish under the pen name AM Sage. If you are new to this channel, then you should know that I put out a lot of videos on writing, tips and tricks, um, helpful hints for writing, some behind the scenes, um, a few vlogs here and there, planner videos, pretty much anything that helps me as an author and as a creative entrepreneur to keep my sanity in place and my businesses running well. So if that sounds like something that you want to be a part of, then make sure that you are subscribed and you hit the bell notification so you don't miss any other videos. If you are subscribed, however, welcome back. Um, I am so excited to see you again, to chat with everybody here again. We had a little bit of a break for the holidays. Um, it was a much needed break, <laughs> as I'm sure most people feel when they get a break from doing something. But it was very relaxing. We do still have our Christmas tree up and a few more Christmas decorations, but we are working on that um, this coming up weekend. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, um, personally, when I was a kid, we didn't really celebrate um, Christmas in the regular times. We are um, Orthodox Christian and uh, not that we are religious in any way, but our Christmas comes later in January. And also we mostly just celebrated New Year's and kind of combine Christmas and New Year's into one. Um, and so our tree was up a lot longer than most people's are. So that's what it is now. Uh, but it'll be gone in the next video, I'm sure, because we need to get on top of it. But either way, um, I have rejigged also the books behind me. So that's one thing I did. I added a whole um, section for Shadowhurst and Etherborn. Um, so those are all here and I'm kind of expanding the bookshelves to fit my own books because there's just so many. Um, and one else thing that I actually got um, is this super amazing, um, look at this thing. It's the Bean Me Up mug. So I don't know if you guys know, but if you have read my Orchard Hollow series, um, it is a paranormal cozy mystery and Piper, the protagonist, owns a um, cafe that's called Bean Me Up. And this is the logo for the cafe. So um, these go on some recipe cards that I send out with the books, uh, but also on this mug that I have. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Um, I'm in the middle of writing a uh, co another cozy mystery, a paranormal one, but it's a short story for a secret project. Um, and uh, so I'm currently writing that. Um, and once it's done and everything's out there, I'll let you guys know how you can read it and all that good stuff. But I'm using this mug a lot because it puts me in that cozy mindset. So what do I want to talk about today? Because that was a lot um, to catch up on. Um, if you are wanting to see more planner related videos, take a look at the latest planner video I posted here that kind of started off the year with the planners that I'll be using this year. And also make sure that you check out my Sage Plans, which is my bullet journal channel. It's absolutely new. So if you're into bullet journaling or creative scrapbooking or any of that stuff, it's the same kind of feel. Um, make sure that you are on there because there's some fun videos that I'll be putting out there as well. But today's video, I actually want to talk about author newsletters. I figured we should talk about this at the beginning of the year because it's kind of the beginning of when people start thinking about their newsletters. If you don't have a newsletter already, start the year, <laughs> hit it hard um, and get one going and try to think of one at least um, for the future because your newsletter is going to be one of your most important tools as an author both indie and traditionally published. So before we talk about kind of my tips for author newsletters, I want to talk about what it is and why you need it. So what is an author newsletter? An author newsletter is essentially what it sounds like. It's an email newsletter that you send out to subscribers that subscribe to be on your mailing list. Um, you can send it out every week. You can send it out twice a month. You can send it out once a month. Um, it depends on your schedule, what you're comfortable with. Um, there are recommendations out there, so maybe don't send one out every six months. <laughs> stick to a schedule, decide on a schedule that works for you and stick to it. I send out my newsletter once a month because that is all my time allows, but I do have a hefty newsletter that has a lot of goodies and information for people. So the reason you would need an author newsletter is because 
Social media is great. Um, TikTok is great. BookTok is great. All of that stuff is great. If it closes down tomorrow, whatever platform that you're absolutely killing it on, you lose your connections to every single reader that might buy your book or has bought your book in the past. The way to stay in contact with these people is to have them on your newsletter. These are your most committed fans. Um, these are people that want to hear from you all the time, no matter what. They're not going to uh, fault you <laughs> for anything. Um, they want to be there. You're not going to get negative comments, negative anything. They will probably help you promote your book when it comes out. And also when you do have releases, these are the people that are going to run out and buy it, at least that's a portion of them, because as we all know, um, newsletters, it, everybody signs up for them. I'm sure I have a million newsletters I signed up for. It doesn't mean I'm buying everything this person sends to me. But they do get to put it to my attention in front of me. And it's something that I pay attention to much more so than if I was scrolling on say Facebook and an ad came up. So that's why you would need it. It's essentially your main tool. And you should start thinking about you doing one or creating one or promoting one even before you write your book. So I know some people say, I don't have any books. What do I talk about? And we can talk about different things <laughs> in this video as well. Um, I do have a resource that I've created just for this video that I'll talk about later in the library. Uh, but just because you don't have any books published doesn't mean you can't get your author newsletter set up. I would recommend starting it right away. If you don't have a website yet, that's fine. Find a way to get a um, uh, landing page. If you get a domain through GoDaddy, they let you actually have a free landing page that you can use for newsletter subscriptions and to get people in that way until you can afford to build your own website or to kind of scale it up. And now for the tips. <laughs> so we talked about the what, we talked about the why. I'm going to have some coffee so we can talk about the tips. So some of my main tips, that there are a million tips that you can have, but some of my main ones that I think work across the board for all types of newsletters, no matter what genre you write. And I wanted to keep this um, as concise, but also as open to different genres as possible. So the main tip that I always give authors, so when I work with coaching authors, um, uh, the first thing that we talk about is their newsletter and what, how many people they have, what they're doing with it. And my main tip for them is to always, always, always have an onboarding sequence. And your onboarding sequence should have double op options. So what does that mean? It means that when somebody signs up for your newsletter or you direct them to give you their email, it doesn't just go off into the void or some spreadsheet that you have on your computer. Something happens to that email. <laughs> you do something with it. And you, what you do with it is you onboard that person. It's the same way I think of it as when you start a new job and you have an onboarding or a training session with HR or somebody else who's in charge of you. So what they do is they introduce you to the company and your job and what it will entail and what you should expect and all of that stuff. They give you some information. They give you pamphlets to take home. This is exactly what an onboarding sequence for a newsletter is as well. It's a, the same thing, but in email form. What you're doing is you're taking that email and you're plucking it into an automated sequence. And if you have MailChimp um, or MailerLite, and if you're using things like uh, WordPress or Squarespace or any other um, big website builders, then all of this will get integrated. And as soon as somebody signs up, it triggers a sequence. What that sequence does is A, it reminds them that they've signed up. B, it gives them more information on what to expect. So they're not like, you know what, I might not want this. Let me opt out of it right now. Uh, because the last thing you want is somebody who appoints you for spam, um, doesn't open your emails, and is just not really the person that you connect with as a reader. So that sequence helps you get rid of everybody who may have signed up just to get your reader magnet, because I would recommend you definitely have one to offer something to get an email. Um, you're not just asking for an email, you're offering something back. And it's always important to give your readers things. But it gets rid of the freebie chasers. <laughs> the longer the sequence, the better, because freebie chasers get bored, they get their freebie, and then they leave. And that's what you want, right? You want people who are there who will support your books, whether they're free or whether they're paid. And the other thing it does is it introduces you to them. It makes you human. So they understand they didn't just sign up for a list 
for H&M to get discount codes on their birthdays, you know. They understand that they signed up to a list that is run by a human being that is going to talk to them and interact with them. And that way you start building a rapport with these people. Um, I have already had some videos here where I talked about onboarding sequences, what they should look like, and another author newsletter <laughs> video. So I'll try to see if I can dig out through the content um, and link everything I can that kind of sort of relates to this topic as well um, and put that in the description. But your onboarding sequence is anywhere between one to five emails. It's usually a comfortable area. The first one, you're essentially saying, thank you for signing up. And this is where the double opt-in comes in. You are asking them to click another box and confirm that they do want to sign up. Because what happens is if somebody reports you for spam or if there's any other kind of issue, you can you now have proof that this person indeed wanted to be on the list. Um, sometimes when people want the free stuff, they will report you for spam and say, I didn't sign up for this. So you just want to make sure that they do sign up for this um, and that they double sign up for this. Um, then you want to have an email that kind of, um, A, gives them the freebie if you have one. Then you want to have another email and you can spread these out over a week or two weeks time, however long you're comfortable with, a few days even. Um, another email kind of talking about you and who you are and getting to know them. Then maybe another email that has a link to all your other books. And then a final maybe email that thanks them for being here and letting them know how often they're going to hear from you on this newsletter. And that's what an onboarding sequence is. Then my next tip is visuals. So much like everything else in your author branding journey, you want to make sure that um, you have consistent visuals and appearances and the way that things are laid out across the board. The easiest way to do this is to have one template that you use for your newsletter every single time. That way your readers, whenever they're getting a newsletter from you, they see that it's from you, they know what to expect, um, they have their favorite sections that they go to right away and then they read the rest. But it creates some kind of rapport and it creates consistency and it creates something for your readers to look forward to every single time that you send the newsletter out. Um, and so the visuals, your branding, so everything across your newsletter should scream your author brand. Um, if you don't know what an author brand is, I do have a video about that as well. But you want to make sure that it all looks the way you need it to look, that it speaks to the audience you need it to speak to, and that it's laid out in the same way every single time. You don't want to send out different looking things every time because that gets confusing when they open it. The first thing they see, they don't know who it's from. So you want to make sure that you develop this kind of um, reaction in the back of a reader's psyche that when they see that visual that they know it's from you and they're excited to read it. Another very important thing to have, um, and people feel awkward about this, but I don't think it's awkward at all because it's your newsletter and it's there for a reason, is to have calls to action. So um, whether it's um, somewhere where they can read more of your books, um, somewhere where they can connect with you on social media, if you're offering something, if you're a part of a builder giveaway, um, things like that. So make sure that there's somewhere always in your email that it doesn't just fall on deaf ears, that there's nothing there, that there's buttons, there's clickables, there's the other places for them to go that have something to do with you. Because at the end of the day, you have to think of your author newsletter the way that very popular social media apps think of their app. You want to keep them on you on the app, you're the app, uh, for as long as possible. So once they're done reading your newsletter, you don't want them to move on and start thinking about something else. You want them to keep thinking about you. So if you give them other options and direct them to different places where they can think about you, see you, look at your books, talk to you, connect with you, you want that. You want them all up in your space <laughs> and you want to be up in their space. <laughs> we are creating this very... Um, a symbiotic relationship here with your readers. And that's important because that makes readers feel like they are a part of your life and they're your friend. Um, and that's the best kind of connection you could have with a reader and more comfy. Now, my next tip, and this is a weird one, um, and a lot of people don't think about it. Uh, you need to have a valid address on newsletters, especially if you're using the bigger uh, providers. And you need that address to be shown every time you send an, an 
newsletter out. This is a legal thing. Uh, I am not a lawyer, but what I can say is in different places. So for example, I'm in Canada and we have the Canspan laws. And over here, that means that if your newsletter or any email or any marketing that you send out to a person doesn't have an address attached to it, that that person can see and link to you, um, you're going to be in deep trouble. <laughs> like you were talking like deep, deep legal trouble, um, criminal charges, I don't know how they work, but I mean, it's not good. Um, and there's different places that have different ways of phrasing this. They have different laws for things like this. So you want to have an address somewhere in the bottom of your newsletter. Um, now, here's the thing. We might not want to give out our home address for personal reasons, privacy reasons, of course, to all the strangers on the Internet, no matter how much we love them as our readers. So in that case, what you should do is look at getting a P.O. box. You can get a virtual P.O. box, so you don't have to go to your local post office. I have a local post office P.O. box because I also get like happy mail that people sent me there um, and I use it for other things. But you can actually get virtual P.O. boxes and that will basically link a physical, like an address to a person and that's what you need um, in your newsletters to make them legit. So next tip is to keep it concise. Um, sorry if you can hear some noise outside. I think they're moving some things around. Um, but keep it concise. You don't want to go too long. So the worst thing is for people to get bored reading your newsletter and click off and delete it. Because if you consistently bore your readers um, or your content is too long or lengthy or wordy and they're not interested, then they will unsubscribe or they'll report you for spam and that's even worse. So keep it concise, get to your points as fast as possible, be friendly, obviously be relatable, be yourself, uh, that's what they're there for, but you don't need to tell them your life story in every single newsletter <laughs> and every single thing you send out doesn't have to be a, you know, a chapter of a book. You can have sections in your newsletter and feel free if you want to, to sign up. I won't get offended if you just sign up to get one newsletter and then unsubscribe, that's totally fine. Um, but if you want to sign up and to my newsletter and see how I do things, um, like I said, I send out a newsletter every month. There is one that's going to be coming out this week that this video goes out. So if you want to sign up now, you won't miss it. Uh, but you can take a look at how I structure my newsletter, what I put in it and things like this. And so my final one, and this one will relate to the resource that I just mentioned, but a couple of really popular topics. So I'll talk about just a, a small amount of them right now, but there's a few popular topics that you can always rely to hit well with readers of all genres. Things like writing updates. <laughs> so even if you haven't written a book yet, you are probably writing a, a book. Um, you're in the process of working on one. You're ideating a book. You're world building. Um, you're thinking about character profiles. You're doing something for this book of yours. It's why you're starting a newsletter. It's um, part of your author journey. So give updates to these readers that have signed up. They want to hear what's going on. They want to support you and your books. And so tell them where you're at, what you're working on, um, what kind of uh, the process is for you. You can talk about your writing journey. You can talk about um, your scheduling. You can talk about when you write and where you write. But give them writing updates as you go along. You also can talk about some behind the scenes. Um, so you can talk about the behind the scenes of your world, of your book, um, of your writing career, things like that. Bonus content, that's a big one. If you have scenes that you're not going to be using in your final book, you can share those. Um, character profiles, character art, maps, <laughs> any kind of bonus content. Readers love that, especially when they get some freebies along the way. Book recommendations. This is one that I do in every single one of my newsletters. I talk about two to three books that I am reading in the month that that newsletter goes out. Um, and they're kind of my TBR list that I am working through. Um, so I look at it more like books I'm reading, not so much book recommendations, but you can talk about book recommendations. If you've read a book that you really love, recommend it to your readers. Um, if you have a friend that wrote a book and that they really are trying to promote and you really love this book, recommend it to your readers. Book recommendations with other authors is actually where newsletter swaps come in too. Uh, now, I've done a lot of newsletter swaps before. I have recently stopped doing them and I only pick the few um, that um, 
I know for sure I have read the book uh, because they can get a little bit spammy in my opinion. Um, a lot of people just sign up and you swap books, which is really cool, but I wouldn't want to phrase it as I'm recommending a book I haven't read because I feel really sleazy doing that to my readers. So instead, I recommend books I'm actually reading and books that I'm excited to read and then they can check them out. And uh, I don't know most of these authors personally. They're literally just books on my Kindle or on my bookshelf back here. So um, giveaways. Giveaways are another great way to connect to your readers. You can give away copies of an ebook. You can give away chapters of an ebook. Um, you can give away swag. So run giveaways, run contests, things like that in your newsletter. That way that the people who signed up for your newsletter, they know that they're the only people that are getting this giveaway. They're, they're doing something fun just for them that you're not doing it for anybody else. Um, usually when I have a release, I will have a giveaway that is just for my newsletter um, and for my Facebook group. So I combine those two together and though the people in both have a chance to win a signed copy. And then another one that you can do and kind of like the final one we can chat on here because the video is getting lengthy <laughs> is a reader Q&A. Um, ask your newsletter subscribers to ask you questions and then the next newsletter tell them that you will answer their questions. So that's a really fun way to connect with people, to interact with people, to have a conversation without sitting right in front of them and having a coffee, speaking of. Oh my God, that's good. I think the cup makes the whole thing better. Um, but now that the topics out of the way, I have actually put together 30 topics that I think are fairly evergreen. So what does that mean? Um, it means that you can pretty much circle through them, kind of cycle them around um, and use them on a regular basis in different ways. And I've put together 30 of these topics that you can talk about in your newsletter. And they are currently as this video goes up in the resource library. So if you want to sign up for the resource library, if you haven't already, um, then make sure that you sign up at the link below. Once you're signed up, there is going to be an email that goes out. So check your spam folders, mark my email safe um, that you don't miss any different updates because sometimes the password might change and things like that. But you will get an email with a link on where to add, um, enter the resource library and the password to use that's currently running to enter it. Uh, there's a lot of resources there. There's plotting sheets, there's um, different um, trackers for words, there's a planner, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But the newest thing that was just added are these 30 topics for author newsletters and ideas for author newsletters. So if you want to get that, sign up to the resource library uh, newsletter and the only thing that happens with that newsletter is just so we're all clear, I'm not going to bombard you with emails, but you will get an email every week when a new video is posted on this channel. And that's the only time that I will ever bother you with the email you sign up for the resource library. Um, it's my way of making sure that we stay in contact if we need to uh, for any reason at all. So. I hope that was helpful and <laughs> that was a lot of information. My mouth is dry despite all the coffee, but I am so excited to be back. I'm very excited to be doing more videos about writing tips. Um, I think because of the change in the way that I do the planner videos with the bullet journal channel uh, being a separate channel on its own, um, which by the way, is growing so fast. I'm so excited. People seem to really like my bullet journaling, which is great because I'm still learning. But I think I'm going to be doing a lot more um, tips videos like this, a lot more behind the scenes vlog style videos, and we're just going to keep um, it to that. Um, the planner videos, we'll, we'll still have planner videos. Um, I think I'll be doing a lot more uh, reading journal videos, things like that. Um, maybe some planner videos that relate to writing, specifically to writing, plotting planner videos, that kind of stuff. So um, I think we're going to keep that going for this year and see how it works out for us with the two different channels. But as always, I want to thank you for being a part of this community, for subscribing, for being so awesome and wanting to listen to me blabber on about writing and just something I'm so passionate about uh, every single week. And as before, I hope you stay magical and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.